Uh, that kind of criticism isn't actually trying to reform the media. It can't be addressed by improving uh, performance. Mm. It's, uh, it's a hate movement led by the President of the United States. Ever notice how everything these people don't want to hear is hate, yet they're completely justified in everything they have to say about Trump and his supporters? As we near the 2020 election, CNN seems to be obsessed with ridding themselves and the Democrat Party from any dissent or criticism. They've been at this for a long time, but it really seems to have ramped up after a series of media narratives turned out to be completely bunk. After the Covington story turned out to be a bunch of Catholic kids who were being harassed by racist minorities, CNN insisted that they knew the story was a hoax from the start and said that criticism of them was tantamount to violence. Then we had the Smollett case, which turned out the exact same way with the media revising history and claiming that they knew it was a hoax from the very start. Next, we started seeing CNN and other media outlets defending extremists in the Democrat Party like AOC, Elan Omar, and Rashida Tlaib. Again, they claimed that criticism of these people was tantamount to inciting violence against them. We saw the typical coordination between the DNC, Hollywood, and the media to coordinate on talking points. It's only gotten worse since the Russian collusion narrative was busted. Now what we're seeing is DNC operatives like Brian Stelter constantly demonizing his competitors at Fox News, its viewers, and Trump supporters. In his typically hypocritical fashion, he throws out a bunch of broad generalizations about his critics, painting them as toothless morons who are incapable of separating fact from fiction. And I think that goes way beyond the notion of um, bias in the media or um, look skeptically at what you are told. It's actually um, an authoritarian news system that is up and running. What these people are really upset about is not having complete and total control over the flow of information. Their lack of self-awareness is truly mind-boggling. He speaks about a quote authoritarian media while talking about Fox News without a hint of irony about the fact that his ideology and his political party have almost total dominant control over the narrative and the flow of information. The media, academia, Hollywood, all of them have the exact same talking points. It's a giant echo chamber. This is a manufactured crisis, Bill. How he manufactures crises like immigrants seeking legal refuge. What the president is doing is manufacturing a crisis. President Trump must stop holding the American people hostage, must stop manufacturing a crisis. It's the president has manufactured one heck of a political crisis for himself. Donald Trump is manufacturing a national security crisis. You will hear them message. say mm -hmm. is that this is a manufactured crisis. It's not a national security crisis. From Nancy Pelosi down to Debbie Wasserman Schultz or anybody else who will give him a dime for this project. Because so there's it's nothing manufactured. The typical argument you'll get from a left winger when you confront them with this fact is that reality has a liberal bias. I think that this really just goes to show the level of arrogance and delusion that these people have about their political beliefs idea that everything that the media reported was false. More than critique of bias, they're now trying to reject the entire idea of a public record. No, that's just a straw man that you created, again without a hint of irony. We do believe you can have a public record, and we all want a free and objective press that can act as the fourth estate. The fact of the matter is we don't have a free press. We have a press that is mostly the political tool of one political party. As long as networks like CNN claim to be objective truth finders and defenders of democracy while they churn out obvious political propaganda, there's going to be distrust of the media. There's deception going on in this very piece because they want the viewer to think that this all started with Trump when in fact it goes back many decades. A great example of why people distrust the media was when the media went from being big critics of Bush what do you say to people who are losing patience with gas prices at $3 a gallon? What we are seeing is you know, a, a government run for the oil company. Drivers are paying a heavy price for the Bush administration's failure to enact a comprehensive energy strategy. The administration under pressure to curb rising gas prices. The political pressure is rising about as fast as the price of gas. So the president gives a major energy speech today. Spiking gas prices from coast to coast have created new political pain for an administration already falling in the polls. To big defenders of Obama. You wouldn't think high gas and oil prices would be a blessing in disguise, but they are. As Victor Lopez found out, they're causing a big jump in the number of jobs. 
We turn now to five things you should know about gas, specifically why gas prices, even at over $4 a gallon, can sometimes be a good thing. And we know that rising gas prices are forcing us to search for alternative fuels and more fuel efficient cars. There are some other reasons to be optimistic about the high cost of gas. Here are just a few of them. From my experience, when a Republican is in the White House, the media plays the role of just the facts news reporters as they torpedo that president at every turn on a daily basis. When a Democrat is in the White House, they circle the wagons and lay waste to all critics. It's just so obvious that this jerk lives in a bubble where everybody hates Trump and everybody hates conservatives. The, the media, you mean liberal commentators, right? I, I mean, I do mean liberal commentators. I also mean very often liberal commentators who pose as journalists. I mean exactly. Notice how defensive Stelter gets. He's attempting to separate so-called liberal commentators from CNN when it's completely obvious that Ben Shapiro is talking about CNN. Brian Stelter's job is to run cover for Democrat Party propaganda as he attempts to shift focus to Fox News and Republican Party propaganda. Although, again, I'll say Fox News does have a pretty good balance of anti-Trump people and pro-Trump people. And as I've shown before, there are studies out there that show that Fox News has been the most balanced in their coverage of Trump compared to all the other networks that are a vast majority negative coverage. Perhaps the Internet is to the First Amendment what the AK-47 is to the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. And here we have it. Speech is violence, don't you know? Again, we see this far left cultural Marxist mantra being used as a mainstream talking point by this liberal commentator pretending to be a journalist. No, free speech is nothing like an AK-47, but it works as a good rationalization to remove your freedoms. Ever heard of the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? It's a very wise axiom, but people like Stelter need words to have power so they can use that as an excuse to silence you. Really, all he's doing is trying to rationalize and convince people that you need to be shut up one way or the other. Thanks for watching. That's all I have for today, folks. Please like, share, and subscribe. Sorry for the lack of videos over the last couple days. My newborn has really worn me out, and we're just starting to get back into the swing of things.